What's up, all you old school, new school motherfuckers? Yep, it's that time again. It's another ridiculous episode of Old School, New School Comedy Podcast. I am your host, your trashy comedy whore, Christy Miller. And uh, we're celebrating Pride this weekend in the beautiful city, the Big Apple. And uh, we're coming here live from the comic strip. And uh, to honor this beautiful weekend of Pride and celebrating love is love with all my queens darling is probably one of my favorite human beings in the entire universe i've known her since back in the day when i opened for paul mooney at caroline's on broadway miss thing was the head of hospitality this bitch took care of all of us backstage for every headliner we she had our she took care of us she was like our mother and back then we knew her as miss curtis oh really <laughs> she is now fully glam woman miss liberty hudson so um miss curtis is now miss liberty hudson and i love you and thank you for being on here <laughs> <laughs> That's it? No. <laughs> I love you too, girl. Yes, Miss D. Pick up your face. Yeah, pick hello. up your face. Put hello. it on mute and keep Are it cute. cute. <laughs> All the courtesies of that yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Get some cement and put that brick in the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the carol for those of you who don't know caroline's on broadway was one of the most epic showcase clubs in new york city in the heart of times square it started off in chelsea as a little cabaret room moved down to south street seaport for a few years and then ended up for the last 30 years in the heart of times square and that's where we all met miss curtis i met I got to Caroline's on Broadway opening for Paul Mooney at the end of 1999, mm-hmm. and that's when yeah. we met. Miss Teig. And the stories this woman has, oh my God. Pour the tea, darling. <laughs> In your fur coat, remember? That's oh, yeah. how we met. I said, girl, give me that fur, girl. <laughs> Yeah, Mooney bought me a he bought me this pimp fur coat mm-hmm. off of Hollywood Boulevard Fierce. in a pawn shop. <laughs> Fierce. I still have it. Yeah, it's done. He's like it's nanny goat, darling. <laughs> and you was platinum blonde. Yeah. Uh, and I said, girl. And she said, oh, yo, Miss Curtis, Paul Mooney. Said, I, <laughs> Mooney said, you you're gonna like Miss Curtis. I said, girl, we hit it off right there, 1999. Yeah. Yep. I remember in the hallway uh-huh. after I got off stage, you're like, oh, bitch, we need a little LA flavor up in this bitch. <laughs> what? Sure do. <laughs> I said, we need some L.A. flavor, darling. Some West Y'all, these Coke. bitches are tired. We <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were best friends the moment we saw each yeah, other. For real. Oh, my God. The stories from back then were so much fun. Like, you've been in the scene. Like, everybody who's anybody knows you. Mm-hmm. Like, from Kevin Hart to Chappelle to Monique to Mooney to... Seinfeld to Witherspoon. Yes. Oh, I miss Uncle I know. Spoon. Witherspoon. Uh, Charlie Murphy, Bill yep. Burr, yep. Jeff Ross, oh, everybody. Hun. Everybody who's anybody. Lisa Lamp. Uh, Lisa Lumpy Belly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, darling. Oh, darling. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, the library's open and it's reading time. <laughs> Get your library cards out. We're checking out some books today, darling. Oh, okay. really? <laughs> That Every- was my voice before all the hormones. I used to talk like, listen, bitch, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody in the planet, every comedian from the top number one to the, the, the uh, most unknown all have a Miss Curtis impression. Mm-hmm. What? You, well, you know what Monique told me. She yes. said, um, you Love know it, when you're doing the comedy store in L.A. And they said, oh, we're going to New York. They said, oh, tell Miss Curtis. We said, what's up? <laughs> she said, like, everybody loves Raymond. Everybody loves Miss Curtis. Everybody know you in L.A., girl. I was oh, like, honey. Oh, yeah. Any comic <laughs> who is a comic, that's uh, it, we just worship you. I mean, you really handled us really well you oh, took yeah. care you had of our course. backs mm-hmm. you took care of us you fucking covered for us when we would fuck up <laughs> i also i told you when someone stole your joke word for word oh hello <laughs> lisa yeah oh. 
Mm-hmm. Excuse me, that was choking on the lampanelli in my throat. Well, because I had all that time to watch yep. you guys over the years. Oh, and then yeah. I would be like, why is he doing Nick DiPaolo's joke? Wait, that's Rick Ross's joke. Oh, no. I'm oh, like, and you uh-uh. would read, darling. Yeah. So tell about some of the people that would take jokes and tell, you know, nay, who cares? It's fun. This is. Oh, uh, and God rest the soul, but uh, Mike Robles used to uh, take Rick Ross's jokes, and I called him on it, and he got <laughs> mad at me because Rich Ross called him on it, and then he's like, did you tell Rich Ross? I said, listen, go ahead with the bullshit. Shit, you want to work in this club? I said, <laughs> okay. I, one word to Lewis, and you giving me a hard time. You will not be up on that stage, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like some of the up and coming comics, oh. they used to be like, "Oh, watch out for that miss." You, you butter up. They used to butter up to me. Remember the? Oh yeah, they oh, would kiss your ass. Like, oh, you could, be, you could get cool with that Miss Curtis. She'll get you. Um, she'll talk to Lewis and get you time. I was like, okay, if you think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, keep telling me that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Believe yeah. all the bullshit yeah. you're spooning mm-hmm. out, yeah, bitch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They revered you more than they revered poor Carol. Caroline Hurst. I know. So <laughs> crazy. Shade. The shade. shade. Pick up your face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh let's uh the the times there those years i spent opening for mooney and you being there and mm-hmm. with rob and montague and and all the the trash that would come in that lewis would would represent oh yeah uh, i know would, oh, oh what a mess girl huh you could say whatever you want, oh, girl. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure. You know what I'm saying? Honey, you black, no, so you could say yeah, whatever you right, want. No, that's <laughs> true. Mm-hmm. You uh, a sister, girl. Light skin I can't, but <laughs> light skin with curly hair, honey, but black as Wesley Snipe in the inside. Darling. Hello, you know? darling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. The funniest joke is when I first met Paul, mm-hmm. and I had told him, "Oh, you know, they got the mulatto kid bringing you the um, champagne," and he said, "So next time I brought him the champagne, I didn't remember this joke," and he said, "Oh, look." They got the mixed kid bringing me the champagne. <laughs> Look, he's back there fighting with himself. The white side saying, why'd you bring that nigga the champagne? And the black side saying, because that's my nigga. <laughs> And the audience went, oh, up. I remember oh, that. But, yeah, right. Oh, I oh, would cry God. laughing. And then he would do it all the time. All the time. Right. Like, he had his things about us. Right. Like, we were his kids, right. you know? Like, even when it came to the point when he got. Sick. When he got really sick, and yeah. then Lewis told the uh, what was it? Was it that one? Remember, was that manager that was used to manage the uh, the Tempe Improv? And he came Kenny? for a while. No. Not Kenny, mm. not Ray. Charles? No, it tra- no, it was a Latin guy from Tempe, Arizona that ran. Oh, the Spanish guy. The Spanish yeah, I forgot, what his, I forgot name his name. I is. didn't like him. Oh, yeah. nobody mm-hmm. did. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> well, we deported her back to Arizona. Uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> Go back <laughs> to the heat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to the sandbox, yeah. darling. Um, but I remember when, when Mooney was really sick there towards the end, and uh, he couldn't handle it. Mooney was having a breakdown mm-hmm. and was freaking out on stage, and and he called Louis Veranda screaming, "What do I do? I can't control him!" And Louis said, "Get him out! Give him his money and fire him!" And threw him out. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, that's and that was because right after you, yeah, after I left when I got in that fight with Robin Montague when she right. tried to, you know, when she hit me from behind. Oh, that bitch! And I fucking beat her ass in the middle of the showroom. Now and what you she had doing? to break that out. Right, and she's doing here now. We're in, Ma- in Maryland. Don't yeah. try it. Honey. Hello, mm. she's doing time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in uh, the salon. <laughs> wait, the first girl on Def Jam comedy, and look where her career went. <laughs> <laughs> As the last girl at the salon. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I remember that night she was all she was in a mood and I got to Caroline's yeah and I sat and Mooney would sit on the side yeah. and I came and sat down and he used to like to watch them seat the room and yeah, see him and vibe yeah. out everything mm-hmm. and I sat down and he goes honey uh, be careful Robin's coming for you and I was like what I go whatever I go I'm too tired to deal with her bullshit he goes she's on a rampage she already ran after Curtis and now she's after you and I was like well uh, whatever tell her t- I don't care I don't have time so she didn't do well that night because she was in one of her moods because mm-hmm. of that dude she was banging, brought his wife to yeah, the show. Right. And I didn't know any of this. Like, this is none of my business. Right. And uh, I went up and I had a killer set. And then she tried to get in my face afterwards. I'm making a long story short. So I was sit down. Me and you sat down in the back to watch him. And I had my salad that Chef made me. And then she comes up and puts her hand in it and points in my face. And she's like, don't you ever call me a hooker from stage again. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's tired. And I was like, uh, I always call you. You're my hooker. Like my bitch, my boo, my right. sister. She's like, that is so disrespectful. And I'm like, okay, keep your voice down. Mooney is on stage. <laughs> we're in the showroom. And I'm standing and, on the wall watching though. Oh, you were sitting yeah. next to me. Oh, I was sitting next to you. You were sitting yeah, next yeah, to right, me. Yeah. And, and I'm like, keep your voice. Like, 
we were in the showroom. Mooney is on stage, and she's like getting my mic. Shh, just at the top. I go not now. Mooney's on you stage. Was and I was salad, and then I took one bite, right, and I, just, and, then and, I just said, gotta, and then she kept getting going on yeah. and on, and I said, you know what? I'm I, I'm done. I'm really I grabbed done. my purse mm-hmm. and my jacket, and I said, I'm out of here. You're like, where are you going? I go, I just got to get out of here. And I walked down the little steps to go to the back. And she hit the you kitchen. With she hit me. The she hit me with a tray. Yeah. On the back of the head, and stood there like, what are you gonna do? So I snapped, and I grabbed that bitch by the hair. I fucked, fucked her and up. pulled her to the ground. I just started wailing on her. Ooh. And then Mooney and all the crowd's looking at us, and I'm slamming her against the wall. <laughs> and Mooney's like, what's going on over there? And here's Miss Carter. Some bitch shit. <laughs> And I go, I quit. And I dropped her and I fucking walked out. Yep. And you and Kenny chased me out in right. the lounge. And I said, I can't deal it with her. It was a WWE SmackDown match. <laughs> okay. China against yeah. <laughs> whatever the. Yeah, whatever against, her name against is. the Bronx. <laughs> against, the ju- <laughs> against the junkyard dog. Okay. The junkie dog. <laughs> Poor oh, yeah. Robin. She was a junkie. <laughs> Oh, she was a coke I forgot. Yeah, yeah, she was a junkie, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God bless her. I, <laughs> what yeah. a mess. God bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, As they darling. Say. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, then she just cut me off when I left the job, and then she didn't, I was like, whatever. She anyway. cut everybody I, off. She was tired. Yeah. She just always wanted drugs. She just wanted, always wanted Rudy and them to get her drugs. And I was like, Girl, go ahead, go ahead with that. Stop sniffing. Imagine, I hope she ain't doing that today with all the fentanyl going around. Uh, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Oh, shade. <laughs> you are so shady. I don't Ooh. even know if she could afford it. I know. So, no. <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> Robin, we wish you the best, <laughs> we, you whore. <laughs> we do. We're so getting canceled yeah. after this show. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, but the story. Sweep up that hair, girl. Uh, (laughs) 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 I'm dying. Oh, God. So tell me some of your favorite stories. Tell me some funny incidents, like favorite. Oh, you know what the funny one was? Joe Clear. I love Joe Clear. Uh, Remember when we had the blackout? He gave me a ride home. Okay. Um, and him and Dominique. Remember Dominique? Oh, oh yeah. I loved Dominique. Oh, I loved her. She was so cute. I know. And so adorable, mm. right? And so Joe Clear used to always have a joke about gay people. Like, he didn't take frozen drinks from gay people, <laughs> at the gay men at Starbucks. He's like, I never take a fr- I ain't taking one of them fruity drinks. And da, da, da. So as he'd be talking, I would make up a pina colada. <laughs> and I would bring it through the side to it and then put it on the table. And then he would look and see it. Everybody would start laughing. And then I would vote <laughs> on the runway. Yeah. And Everybody was clapping because they knew. Yeah, it's it's a little joke. That then one time, I had Roman, who was another waiter. Oh, I love Roman. I had him cover because he was a big boy. So I had yeah. him cover me. And Joe was doing that thing on stage. And right. he's like, yo, Kurt, get me a soda. I'm a little parched. So I said, Roman, come on. I'll go behind you. Bring him the soda. So as Roman's bringing him the soda, I pull out the cream <laughs> drink. As soon as he's telling the joke, the audience went bananas. <laughs> oh, my God. They were, he's like, Kurt, do that all the time. This is... He does That's it all hilarious. The time. Yeah. I said it's part of the act, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah, I had fun times. Oh, oh yeah. like Mike Epps. And when he oh. started to blow up, when he started to really blow up and do the kick up with Ice Cube movies and yeah. stuff, mm-hmm. and he couldn't drink, right? So, because Ice Cube doesn't, that's why he got rid of Mike Epps, because he was back drinking and stuff. So, when you work with him, like Kevin, they, you don't, you can't drink, you can't yeah, do anything. Yeah, because they're, ser- yeah, they're right. professionals. So, he has a that's security why they're successful. guy. He has a security guy. And Mike Epps just to call me Curly Top because of my curls. Yeah. So he so he had a bodyguard and every time I brought him a soda, the bodyguard would have to taste it with another straw to see if there's alcohol. Of course. In it. And then Mike Epps would sneak through the back, go to the side door where Morgan Stanley with the dumpsters, you know, with the oh, trash yeah, cans. Yeah. He used to go sneak by and then go pss, pss, curly top from the side of the <laughs> curly top. Give me some Crown Royal, and I would give him the Crown Royal. Then he'd run, run back to the thing, and then pour it in the coke. Was so crazy. Oh my god! But then when he started to really blow up, he got very Hollywood on me, and I had to let him have it, Charlie. <laughs> we tell we me had the an story. entourage in the in the dressing room, so I go in there like always. Right. Hi, Mike. What's up? Um. Uh, what's up? You need anything? And then he said, "This is what he did. He pointed to his assistant and said, deal with her.'" 
I said, why? I said, oh, no, 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 nigga. This ain't no L.A. <laughs> this is New York. Nigga, just because you got a, all right, curly time. All right, curly. Oh, dang, God. You got to see them faces because I'm a light skin. You know, I'm yeah. half breed. So I'm, I'm black and Portuguese. So the black people looking up there, like, did he just say that? I said, nigga, this is New York. Yes, I did say the N word. I said, you better get over it. I said, don't you ever. I used to get him all kinds of drugs because, you know, Lewis yeah. told me to do whatever they want. Yeah, exactly. Get them. So Rudy used to always bring him coke right. and marijuana. I'm from the Bronx. I and I used to be like, hey, who are you acting now? You getting bougie? You going with uh, him? I said, I don't think so. <laughs> and Marlon and Sean, Sean, Sean was as shady as ever. All Hollywood with an assistant, Flaming Queen, knowing that's his girlfriend. And then Marlon used to be like, we all know that Sean's girl, I'm, sh- girlfriend. Marlon is cool as shit. Marlon I love to, Marlon. He remember he used to come in the back and cook chicken wings with the Mexicans and he'd uh, go behind no, the bar. Marlon is so sweet. Yeah, and, and he's so but nice. But Sean, like Damon one time at the comedy store tried to like set me up with Sean. I'm like, he's gay. Uh, oh, you oh, did. Oh, shit. shit. Yeah, Marlon says that. Marlon said, we always say, when are you going to come out? Yeah, because he's so pretty. Like, he's oh, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Like, I would go out with him, but oh, I'm like, yeah. he's so Nelly. Like, yeah. girl. Yeah, I know. Like, right. Damon was like, because back in the day, Damon was fine. Oh, Damon lovely. was pick- yeah. Oh, he was lovely. lovely and he yeah. told me, he goes, I don't date white women. And I no, said, No, you don't. No, and I no. go, I respect that. Mm. But who says anything about dating? <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hello. I'm not I trying tw- to. I was a 28 year old girl, honey. Right. I'm I was not like, trying to be he on was... your show. My wife and kids. Uh-huh. I'm trying yeah. to be your side chick and yeah, kids. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> my um, wife, kids, and my side chick. chick. Right. Hello. Um, I'm not trying to be that bitch. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and I, you know, and up with laughing. But Damon and I had such a good friendship, and right. we could tell each other anything. So one night, I came out of the the OR at the comedy store, and he's standing in the hallway with Sean, and he goes, "Do you know Sean?" And Sean's like, "Hi." And I go, "Hi." And I was like, you know me, I'm from San Francisco, bitch. I could peep a queen with my eyes closed right, in the hello. dark. Okay, hello. hello. With my with being deaf, I could peep that bitch. And you I was like, a girl. Two two, girl. And clock I was a like, two two. yeah, I was like, girl. Yeah. Who are you telling, bitch? Right. Like, when she was in, um, what you call it? In, um, I love him. Scary I, movie. I mean, him. Well, her. You know, I call everybody she. Everybody's so, a she. I'm old school. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> she said, man, you could be tough as DMX, honey. I'd be like, oh, she can rap my ass off. DMX or she a man? Yeah. Hello. She, okay. Hello. God rest the soul, <laughs> That was my favorite term when dudes used to, when I used to go into gay clubs, right? Mm-hmm. I To me, everybody in the club was a girl because right. I like straight boys. I like thugs. Yeah. So um, I just just go in when they started kicking to me I said tell him listen I like DMX type niggas you know the niggas that sling the crack not smoke the crack <laughs> <laughs> yeah those queens used to try to butcher it up bitch who you Nelly I just seen you voguing two seconds ago on the right. floor yeah. <laughs> Howdy, I don't bump purses remember when I, when I was battling this gay rapper caution I used to be at rapper and so I wish you still rap well I still do you better yeah, but I do it as liberty but yeah so anyway um I battled this queen caution and um she was terrible. And I and I <laughs> I used to say, why you queens be on Christopher Street bumping purses? I'll be in the studio spitting these ill verses. <laughs> <laughs> Caution, I uh, can't spit. Uh, wait, <laughs> this is the first, I know what I said. I said Caution, you can't spit, you should have swallowed. Right. Uh, uh, nasty. I said, who the hell is this? A queen named Caution? I'm going to get rid of his ass like an abortion. <laughs> I'm not ready. And guess what, guys? Id- Idris Elba produced those three tracks. Yes, he, he did. He darling. was our doorman at Caroline's. Yes, he before was. Before he got on the wire for yep. two years. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. He was on the hire, and then he got the wire. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, he was the doorman. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. Nice looking. Nice oh, guy, pretty. too. Very sweet. Yeah. So sweet and pretty. Mm-hmm. And I love that he produced your stuff. Yeah. I uh, have your CD. I have it still. He, I found it the other day. He I loved dying. when I, uh, he's the one who told me to come out because when I was rapping and I wasn't, and he's like, because he's from England. So in England, they come out at, he's like, yeah, they come, they come out, out at six, six years months. Old. <laughs> yeah. They come the out of the womb voguing out yeah, of the vagina. Hello. <laughs> so um, it's way more open over there. Yeah. And so, um, he told me, and then that's we, that's how we started doing it. I remember his daughter was only two years old. Now she's 20-something. I was Damn. like, girl. He used to live in Jersey City. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interest. Nice guy. Yes. Pretty. And he's got a big one, they say. I don't know, but he, oh. he, he banged a few As girls at Cal. I was going to say, honey, she's so nice. That dick is hanging. Because no, yeah. no angry dude has a big dick. Because no. if you got a big dick, you ain't angry. No, no, no angry. darling. <laughs>
or fat dudes. You make you know. bring out all the crazy I out of me. Know. You know that bit. I got, mm. Oh really? Oh really? <laughs> oh, oh, she thinks she's doing something, right? <laughs> oh, my wife to tell her, but look, listen, know your place and pick up your face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Know your place, girl. Who was one of your favorite comics besides me and Paul? Obviously, hilarious. Oh, oh, you and Paul. I love Bill Burr. He's so delicious. I, He's I, so sweet. Oh, I love. I like Nick Paolo, but um, and, he uh, went Jeff, crazy. Yeah, Jeffrey Ross. Uh, He's sweet. Uh, um. I I'm a, a blue mess. comic, but I like some clean cut. So for the clean cut, I would go with Brian Regan. Yeah, but Brian is so funny. It's yeah, not even about being clean. Well, no, that's what like, I mean. Regan is one of the funniest right. dudes, and yeah. he doesn't, and he's just not dirty. It's like no. I'm blue, but I I'm just me. Yeah, I'm right. not putting on a front. No, right. You know, he's yeah, not yeah, Brian yeah. Regan's not clean to be clean, so no, he can he work. Just, that's his that's comment. That's just who yeah, he is. Yeah. And I, me, I'm yeah. not blue to be blue. I'm just it's just the way I think yeah. and the way I talk. That's why I can play any room. Regan can play any room. I think Kevin Nealon was funny. He was, but he's a very sweet guy. You know. Oh, he's man. a nice yeah. man. And Bob Saget was hilarious. Dude, Bob I, would have me cry. I gagged. I was like this. That's the guy from Full House there because Lewis goes, wait, you're going to be surprised at his comedy. I said, oh, oh yeah. yeah, right? I came out there. I'm like, oh, even the audience was like, oh, my God. Well, I knew you, Bob Saget as a comic before he got Full House because, right. you know, I grew up yeah. watching comedy. I was obsessed with it because I was a, a kid. Sorry. And I remember Bob Saget, he'd have a guitar and play dirty songs and oh, okay. hilarious, but just so deadpan. And I was oh, like, wow. he is so dark and twisted. Right. Fucking hilarious. And then he gets Full House. and I'm like, oh, if they only knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Coulier. Oh, horrible though. Oh. Nice guy, but yeah. child. Girl, you, how I bad? Said, how did you go with Alanis Morissette? How did you fuck her up so bad? What's wrong with her that I, she got tore up by I, an yeah, impressionist? I know. <laughs> By a dude that does Elmer Fudd. Yeah, Girl, I know. <laughs> that dick must be big as shit. Yeah, he must have laid <laughs> he must down. Have tore- the- yeah, hello. Or maybe he was eating it. You know what I'm saying? You never maybe she know. Was a muncher. Uh huh. No, I think he just pounded her so hard she came out looking like a smashed pumpkin. Oh yeah, she uh-huh. does. That. Oh, she did some work. I just seen him on some show. No, I'm like, they want her to replace uh, Katy Perry on American Idol. That ain't happening. That was like, girl, that American ain't Idol's been dead for 15 years. Why no is one, that still on? No, no one even went. They went. They didn't even make albums no more. They're not like no. Kelly Clarkson no, and all No, they just, them, yeah, yeah. They, it's it's over because everything's too saturated now. Yeah. And like, there's no personalities on there, at least on The Voice. Yeah. Blake Shelton had such a oh, great he's personality. So funny, oh, yeah. he's hilarious. But even John Legend's too. I mean, Kelly Clarkson has a personality. You yeah, know she's I mean? adorable. Yeah. And so, yeah. But I mean, I don't even know them shows. I'm yeah. like, I just. But the, but the Voice is all about the judge. You know that, right? Yeah, I and know. American yeah. Idol's about the singing. Yeah, Nobody about cares. The, about the singing. Yeah, I know. Girl, it's like a Disney show. Girl, oh, I, I feel like I'm on a cruise ship every time I watch and it. Let them, pick up your they, they, they let the 600-pound guy win this year, the Hawaiian guy, because his father died and he was always crying when he was thinking. So he won the award. He's, he, Are you sure he, he was crying and not sweating uh, fat? No. I, oh, oh, so. oh, canceled. Pick, oh, <laughs> pick up your belly. Oh, yeah. Pick it up, girl. Pick it up. Because I'm not holding it. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Uh, Listen to me. My friend said, oh, there was this chubby guy who really used to like me in Boston. Uh-huh. I live in Boston now, but I'm moving back next year, March 2024. Yes, I get bitch my is bitch coming back. back. Woohoo. To Harlem, girl. Harlem. Pick uh, up your face. Anyway, Harlem. So she uh so I live in Boston and he was trying to come out. I said, bitch, what if it looked like me holding up that stomach while I'm sucking this dick? Are you crazy? You gotta pay me a lot of money to hold that shit up. That's like a construction site. I said <laughs> <laughs> You need scaffolding oh, to suck that dick. Girl, I was like, ew, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh, no, he was man. cute. Was Puerto Rican cute, but he but stomach would just went over his like Ooh. Yeah, and he was had a really nice looking face, but I was like, I can't. No, 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 I'm too no. shallow. My yeah. vagina is shallow. Oh, God, you getting on top of that, right? Oh, all the I belly went, fat flapping. Yeah, you'd be like, sw- like you're riding in a wave. Ew. Like, oh, here comes a big this one. Honey. Get no, your surfboard no. out. Ain't sticking that in the coochie. No, oh. no, darling. Are you going to spank me with that belly? Good night. Mm. <laughs> you know it's going to be three years, October 20th. 
That I've fully transitioned. Aww, Tiffany's yes. turning three, honey. Her name is Tiffany. <laughs> Wait, let me tell you the story. Have breakfast at Tiffany's. Right. So this is what happened. So I named my breast at three years old. I was enlarged. They were B cups, and I went to a double D. So they, I called them Thelma and Louise. They just turned three. Aww. And now Tiffany's about to turn three. But when we was in the hospital, I was getting the surgery. Uh-huh. All the nurses, you have to stay in for two days. Right. And all the nurses would come in, and I said, oh, they said, are you so excited? And I said, yeah, her, I named her Tiffany. She said, and and I told her every day, Tiffany, hurry up and get healed. So, because we're about to have breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. Oh, you are so hilarious. I, I can't, I'm so excited you're moving back. Now, oh, if Caroline's yeah. opens another location, yeah. would you go back to yeah. work? Uh-huh. <gasps> Greg Charles, yeah, but I probably would go back. Yeah, but I would go back to manage. I would oh, be a manager. Even better. Yeah, oh. I know. Hello. Mm-hmm. I'm going to deep throat this microphone now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, plus I know everybody. So yeah. I mean, even though I've been out, like, even when I came back that August. And Is I, Lewis going to continue to book? Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, you course. should be the book. Oh, guy. I know. I do know everybody. You should You should literally take oh, over I the could. throne yeah, when he right. retires. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not playing. Like, no, you no. should take over the throne right. when Lewis decides to retire. You should. Yeah. You're the perfect person. No, because I, I know, yeah. You know everything about that place, and everybody loves you, and you really love Caroline and yeah. Lewis, and you totally cherish the name and and you put you know what i mean like you're such a huge part of caroline's on broadway right. all these years, years yeah. Ago, yeah like mm-hmm. you are the face of it you know it's you know caroline's so sweet and quiet and then lewis is you know i haven't seen her since she's you know since covid yeah i know miss ding she's so, been working out of her house i was i'm like i want her to come into the city i haven't seen her in forever but she um what was i gonna say to you Oh yeah, no, that that could be a possibility too. I think she's going to open him something. I don't know. They're still doing the New York comedy festivals, though. Yeah, they're doing the festivals. They still have the Beacon. They have the Garden. Oh, but yeah, I know, I know. Um, I know she's looking at other locations. Yeah. I can't wait. I know. She will put everybody to shame. Oh, bitch, if I stop booking, bitch, you be working there. Oh, oh no. bitch, I'll be headlining oh, every, <laughs> every week. <laughs> Just let me feature for everybody big, yeah, and I'll right, work the week. Right, I don't yeah, care. Right? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Hello. Get hello. that money. Hello. Um, so, um, yeah, that's just so funny. Yeah, that's a possibility. But no, I, I definitely would go back to and work. Yeah. Uh, you, I, I, you don't even know how many years I've prayed for mm. you to come back there. Because oh, when yeah. you left, you know, I left. And then like a week over. or two later, you left. Right. And then right after that, like in that same month, that's when Mooney had his breakdown. Right. And he flipped out in the, in the lounge and this is why he called Lewis to say, I can't control him. He goes, first you fi- you get rid of my girl, then you fire Curtis. What the fuck oh, is yeah, next? And I he know, flipped yeah, out and yeah. he was throwing tables and chairs. Oh, no, I heard. Yeah. yeah oh, he, I did hear about yeah, that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then, you know, so we were all gone. All of a sudden, that whole era was over yeah, in a it month. Over. It was done. It was done. It was a done deal. Done. done. Once I left, all the comics was like, yeah, oh, they had I a deal with Chris uh, Pierce. And you uh, see what Craig Charles said. That Charlemagne security guy was going to beat him up. Yep. Oh, he's a hot mess. Oh, girl. Wait, I didn't know Ray, that fucking goose. I was looking on the comic strip lives. I didn't know that fucking geeky nerd. I'm sorry, I cannot stand Ray Goose. I wish you would listen to this podcast. <laughs> I knocked the shit out of you, bitch. You know? You ugly uh, motherfucking hair. He got hair on his back from his head to his fucking asshole. And probably on his old asshole, too. He's like Teen Wolf. Because um, he was shady. He's the one that got I know. me. Like, to, he got like, you fired. Yeah. He, he he sold everybody out. And so I says, oh, yeah. But you know what? Listen, I haven't seen that motherfucker. I'm knocking him da- out, darling. I may be trans, but I got Mayweather hands. Okay? Don't get it twisted. I was sewing this right hook before I was carrying that pocketbook, bitch. Honey, okay? she may be May West on the outside, <laughs> but she's Mayweather on, on the inside. inside. Okay, no <laughs> doubt. I'm never gonna lose. I don't have testosterone. My testosterone levels are dead, but bitch, these hands are still rocks, bitch. <laughs> Bang. Head <laughs> uh, But um, I can't believe he does a show here. Here? Did you know that? No. I looked on the website. It's Ray Goots. They, they do uh, um like a new talent here. On Mondays or something, I gotta show you. If you, you gotta show me, yeah. Girl. Let me go into the phone and I'm gonna <laughs> show you, <laughs> bitch. I was tight when that mother and I told that motherfucker. I said, if I ever see you in the street, you know better to run. And then he was coming to playwrights one night, and I happened to be up in there, and they go, oh, they told him, and they did not come in. Of he was course. about to come in. Katie Red's like, oh no, you gonna fuck him up? I'm like, <laughs> Oh, girl, I know. <laughs> Playwrights, you guys, there's a bar around the corner from Caroline's, literally on 49th between 7th and Broadway. Right. 
and Carol Lyons was on Broadway between 49th and 50th. So mm-hmm. after the shows, we'd go we hang out the there, playwrights. eat right. and, dr- and drink and hang out. And we had the best time. Like that was our home. Like yeah, that was our. Was. That was basically our right. after party. Yep. Was playwrights and, and we didn't even get a check. We didn't get bills. We nope. just left a tip. I, d- I had my fortieth birthday there. Oh yeah, upstairs. I remember, yeah, remember that. Mamba, yeah. I had the whole mm-hmm. floor. They're like, take the whole floor, girl. It's all yours. Yeah. And it was so much fun. But uh, what do you look like? at this? Okay, Monday night laughs with Ryan. Look, beat it. Okay, with. Con- Ryan DeCalis, I don't know who that is, and Ray Goots, Goots cast, and James Camacho. Yeah. He's a nice kid. James oh. is a nice kid. He's got a good following, but. Ray so Goots. I guess they do it. Yeah, but what's he doing here? Oh, I can't. Because they ain't got no more Caroline's doll. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Because I seen him. Yeah. I said, oh, no. I was like, what is he doing here? Child. I hate Ray Goots. If you're listening, you ugly motherfucker. <laughs> You four-eyed freak, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about that. Yeah, he fucked you over yeah, he hard. Did. Him and Dan McMahon. Now Dan McMahon has got a catering company in London, in England. Oh, my goodness, girl. Girl, she had to go overseas. She was crazy. <laughs> but you, you never went to one of her plays? No shade, Dan, but it's true, girl. You could not act. You would send all that money on acting school and all that. And now she and, acts like a caterer. Yeah, and now she's a caterer <laughs> in England. Are you getting in? Oh, my goodness. She couldn't serve food in America. No. No. <laughs> no. She was Poor crazy. Thing. Poor thing. Oh, they were all crazy. All the fucking whack jobs that, that were. But we there. had a good team, even we, even before when I first came. And then all those old waiters that were there for years, they all left. I was like eight of them at one time. So yeah. then that's when we all got the new wait staff. Like right. we've got, um, like we had Devon and Caribbean. You know, that's when everybody came in. Right. Jason yep. G and Felice. Oh, and I love them. Jason G. I forgot yeah, about him. He's in Brooklyn still, I think. Felice. Felice, oh. yeah. And then we had. And Tiffany. Oh, and Tiffany. And Chris, I still see her. The drunk bitch. <laughs> she's she's so up. funny. No, but I love Tiffany. Tiffany's a riot. Tell her I said, hey, I girl, will. I love her. Um, tell her that, um, what did I say to her? Oh, one time she was drunk and she was in the Bronx and she was at some guy's house and she didn't know. So she left and she didn't know and she got in a gypsy cab and she didn't know where I lived out to tell the gypsy cat which is I took her out she pissed all her pants I took took her out I washed out her pants I put her in the shower and then I gave her boxes and a t-shirt to go to sleep and then we woke up and we started drinking (laughs) and she had to go to work I didn't have to go to work right and she was twisted I said you're going to work twisted yeah and she dropped oh remember Jason asked our rest is so the flaming queen lady J. oh Oh my God. She was so high on crystal meth, Mama. No, not crystal meth. K. She dropped all the pina coladas on the computer, and the computers went down. Oh my God. She was. She died of OD. Oh. Yeah, she died That's like so years. Sad. Remember Ariana? Oh, mm. She used to go with Dan, the one with the blonde hair. Remember? Mm-hmm. And she's like, "You fucked me." Oh my God. She used to flip out. We we had some crazy ones though. Chris uh-huh. Pierce was a hot mess. Always jealous. Oh, so when I left, jealous. this fat, ugly, bald headed queen from Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> took over so listen <laughs> w- w- when I came back two years ago to see the Kings of New York um, the comedy show at Carolus it was like nothing ever changed and then Lewis I was supposed to surprise them and Lewis went fucking told him oh you know Miss Liberty's coming so when I got there it, but it was like they was like oh we missed you Rob Stapleton and Capone I love y'all Mark oh, we have a talent I love them I, but, um, they was like when you left it was totally different I yeah said, the energy changed like yeah, I, I like, like I ran into after they couldn't all that. even get food and stuff like that no it was like, and yeah, it was um I remember like after all that went down and then a couple years later you know actually a few years later I was walking on 49th to go to the train I was going to the gym and I see Lewis walking towards me with Pasquale. Right. Oh, and he passed. I know. Oh, well, Greg told us. Yeah. yeah so um, I Shout see out to Greg Charles. We love you. Greg Charles. I love him. Greg was always like on my side. That always. Was so sweet. And uh, so I see Lewis and I'm like, so I, so I was like, Lewis Ferranda? And he goes, and he always called me Mooney's girl. Right. You know, he's like, Mooney's girl. And he hugs me really tight. Because, you know, 
after we all left, that place kind of went downhill. It did, and then everybody blew up. So it was nobody no more, came back. There's no more Chappelle's. There was no more um, Kevin Hart, David Tells. There yeah, there's no, no more Tells. There's yeah, no more Bill Burr's because no. they're all playing the Beacon and bigger. And now there's no. Yeah, th- then it was no more Tracy Morgan either. Because, yep. Yeah, so yeah, they like, were all no. gone. So yeah. it's like, and there was no more late night because Paul Mooney was yeah. late night. Right. Paul yeah. Mooney was started the reason the late night. he yeah. started late nights mm-hmm. in New York City because he was the one that could just. Open, do a show and pack them in every weekend. 350 people. We, we, I, our max was said that we only fat, um, sat 280. <laughs> that was a lie, honey. We, <laughs> fat, we sat sometimes 360. Oh, okay? I remember we one night we sat like 400 and something yeah, for Mooney. It was standing quick. room yeah, only. Remember, we couldn't yeah, get yeah, through. Remember that night? Stools. Yeah, yep. right. I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, girl. <laughs> remember, I used to go, it's feeding time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's feeding time. I used to be like this to the Mexicans. Get them chicken wings fucking prepped on that. Because, you know, I was the ex- I was the head waiter, so yeah. I was the expediter. And I used to be like, sometimes we used to do them tickets. I'd be like, you got 32 <laughs> wings all day. <laughs> Orders of wings, every fucking table. Chicken wings, fried shrimp. Um, I only get five shrimp for $12. I, said, I used to say, well, girl, there's the Popeyes right around the corner. <laughs> they used to laugh because they used to think... I mean, I started out waiting tables. And so I used to joke with them, but I used to give it to them. And they used to be like, listen to me. So I said, you know, on my, on my black tables, you know, even the yeah. black waiters didn't want to wait on black tables because they want, they run you around. Now, yeah. everybody had 26 people, right? Right. So we would have six tables, uh, six, six two tops, and then the six, and then a six top, and then two four tops, right? Right. So we would have that, and then they would be like, "Oh, I need to get this." So I learned right away, honey, because the person that trained me was black. She's like, "Girl, you do a hip hop show like Hot ninety seven and Lover Dr. Dre. Um, you bring every all extra napkins, extra sauces, extra silverware because they're gonna keep asking you like you're the only table, mind you, got all these other tables." So I used to train the waiters to do that, right? And because they, and I used to be Listen, you ain't my only table. Now you see, I got all these other. They like, "Oh, you funny, you a comedian." I was like, "No, honey, I'm beating my head up, going, I'm throwing you shade, bitch. You shouldn't be eating them, you, girl. Yeah. Your cholesterol is too high to uh, order that, girl." And then one time, wait, did I ever tell you the story? You know, I you remember this story, okay? Um, because Paul was coming in on the Late Show, but it was somebody black was on the the. the all right, somebody black was to two middle show, um, middle shows. I forgot who it was. Uh-huh. Anyway, and they couple tried to walk out on me, and she weighed about three hundred pounds, and she was oh. in leather, right? Oh. And so we ended up paying it, and then her boyfriend said, "You ain't getting no tip, you faggot." Mind Ooh. you, the gratuity was already in there, nineteen dollars. I got a tip, stupid. So as they were walking away, <laughs> mind you, it was about one hundred and eighty black people right. in the wall in the lobby, right? And I said. I said, okay, bye, Precious. The movie Precious just came out. It just came out. I said, bye, Precious. And then I said, honey. She said, fuck you. I said, and she said, honey. I, I said, I got one word for you, honey. Cows are not supposed to wear cows because she had a whole <laughs> oh, leather, leather, leather suit on. Oh, Bitch. pick up. Yeah. <laughs> Did the whole place go nuts? Oh, they went. They was like, you need to be on stage. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, God. I remember oh, the Mooney Nights. There's one of my favorite, like, I used to love, like, I mean, I would do really well in those rooms because, you know, I mean, I'm fucking crazy. And I love, Paul Mooney had the greatest crowds. Yeah, I mean, and if you could do a Mooney show, uh, you, you, you can play any room right. because they are so, like, like with Dice. People are like, how do you go from Paul Mooney and then open for Dice Clay? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but they're like, it's so different. I said, it's really not because they're both extremely you know, like hardcore die hard fans of that guy. So you got your die hard Mooney fans and then you have your die hard dice fans. So it's the same ideology because they're so like dice, 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 dice. And they're Mooney, Mooney. They don't give a fuck what's on stage before. And then when I would do a Mooney room and all of a sudden this white girl would come on stage and right then their asses would tighten like, Oh fuck this bitch. Right. <laughs> and I remember one night and I used to murder because I would just go in and attack like not mean, but I would just grab them and I would. I remember one night I got like half standing ovations all the time. Oh, you always did. Yeah, you never. It. You never bombed on. Oh, there was a couple show. times. Oh, you do. A couple times, yeah. Oh. But it was because I was a. It was a beginning. I was still feeling it oh, out. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So it was and once I found it out, once I figured it out, like after a couple shows, right. I was like, oh, I see. This is. I can't do all my white shit. So mm-hmm. I got to like. So I would more. So I, you know, I learned how to write for everybody. Oh yeah, no. They and it was the them. best school I ever went to. Was opening for Paul Mooney was 
the best comedy school and, yeah. and get your sea legs to play anything. So I can play any room. So I remember one night I got on stage and it's packed. It was Saturday night. And there was this girl in the front and her boyfriend, because, you know, the long tops there, yeah. they would sit sideways to the table and watch the comic. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. walked up on stage and this bitch literally over exaggerates, crosses her arms and turns her back to me and looks at her boyfriend like, if you laugh, I will kill you. And it was such an intense like turnaround, like she made it like so obnoxious. Right. And I was talking and she's like, Ugh. she's like, don't you laugh? And she was all mad at her boyfriend because he was, you know, watching the show. Right. So I leaned down because her back was to me. So I t grabbed the mic out of the mic stand and I leaned down right behind her head and she don't see me. I know what you're talking about, table 850. Yep. Though. And I lean behind her head and I go, don't worry, mama. I'm not fat enough to fuck your boyfriend. I swear to God, the oh, whole place went bananas. nuts. <laughs> Screaming and stomping. Right. Oh, she pick up your face, bitch. Yeah. I am not the one. Right. And right at that moment, like, and the whole place went nuts. Right. And I was like, I got these motherfuckers now. Yeah, yeah. uh huh. Pick up your wig, bitch. Oh, <laughs> pick up your wig. Yeah. Your wig just got split, bitch. Okay. Your lace front is untied. Okay, hello. <laughs> Don't hate on Christy because she's a penthouse and you're an unfinished basement. Bitch. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Oh my God! So you like you being there for 16 years at Carolines and seeing everybody on the planet. Was there any comp like what comic had like you know I have favorite I don't have like a favorite well Mooney's my favorite because that's right. my heart, mm -hmm. but every comic has a joke of theirs that I love. So I always ask my guests, and usually they're comics. I'll say, is there a joke that a comic wrote? that you go, damn it, I wish I'd written that. But for you, since you're not a comedian, I would say, is there a joke that you just like, oh my God, that is so fucking, his like mm -hmm. brilliant. So who do you- Paul Mooney, cause he's my favorite also, but right. I know most <laughs> all his jokes. But this white lady was saying, oh, you say the N word, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. He said, honey, I know I'm a nigga. When I die, bury me in a Cadillac and write nigger on the license <laughs> <day."> <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant, wasn't oh, that? Oh, he is and so... And a Cadillac. And a right Cadillac. Nigga, right right nice <laughs> <and all. laughs> I was like, the audience went bananas. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what he would read. Remember that one night at Caroline's, when, uh, like when he was doing Negro Domus on the Chappelle show. Oh, yeah, right. So those two little young white girls sat right in the front because oh, they yeah. were like, all, oh, it's Chappelle's show. It's yeah, Paul right, Mooney's right. Chappelle show. It's the Chappelle show. Mm -hmm. And within five minutes of Paul Mooney, they walked out. Yeah, they got out. <laughs> run, little white rabbit, Raps, run. Uh, <laughs> he used to say, I love it when them white people walk out of my show. Mm -hmm. Run, you little white rabbit. Yeah, I hope right. Negroes are burglarizing your oh, house. Yeah, when you get, oh, yeah. I hope <laughs> niggas are... <laughs> I'm robbing your car right now. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. oh, he did not play. Oh, it was so fucking hilarious. I love him. Oh, he was the greatest. Yeah. And uh, so because I do this in all, as you know, all comics love street jokes. Like yeah. we all have, we sit around and tell stupid street jokes. And we all know Paul Mooney, who's, you know, that's like my mentor, would close his, well, you knew when Paul went into street jokes, he was wrapping up. And that's how you knew he was closing his show. So, and he would mooniize them. Is there? What is your favorite street joke? From uh, it comes from Paul. <laughs> you want me to say it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, tell it like you're telling me for the first right. time. A white lady named Beck Betty is baking her little son Charlie, white son Charlie, a chocolate cake. So while she's doing it, he takes the chocolate frosting and puts it all over his face and goes, Mommy, Mommy, look at I'm black. She smacks the shit out of him. <laughs> and she says, go, go tell your father what you did. He said, Daddy, Daddy, look, I'm black. And the father smacked the shit out of him. <laughs> said, now you go show your grandfather what you did. He said, Grandpa, Grandpa, look, I'm black. And he smacked the shit out of him. And he said, now go back to your mother and tell your mother what you learned. And he went back to the mother and Betty said, now, Charlie, what did you learn? He said, I learned I was black for five minutes and already I hate you, white motherfucker. <laughs> 
<laughs> Brilliant. Oh, uh, he is. He was the greatest. Yeah. God rest. Oh, and the soul. genie one too. But oh, I, the I genie one. I forgot that. I oh, the forgot. genie one is like there's a, there's a, a black man walking on the beach because Mooney would change. Mooney, if you guys know Paul Mooney, he would change street jokes and make them mm -hmm. very racial and very Paul Mooney, like mm -hmm. the way Mo like like he wrote it, like he would make it his own. He's like, oh, a black man is walking on the beach and he finds a genie lamp and he rubs it and the genie says you get two wishes he goes uh i thought i'd get three he goes no you're black you only get two <laughs> so <laughs> already it's a mooney joke and he goes okay well i want equal rights and equal respect and love for all black people and white people to be recognized as one and that we're all the same and he goes uh I'm not a miracle worker. Uh, find something else. He goes, okay, I want you to uh, build. Uh, oh, I did it backwards. Shit, I did it backwards. So first, okay, fuck that. So he says, you know, my first wish is to build a bridge from here to Africa. So when I get sick of white people's shit, I can, you know, walk my ass home. And he goes, uh, I'm a genie, not a construction worker. I can't do that. Pick something else. And he says, I, then I want equal rights and love for all black people and white people to be one and nobody and, and racial tolerance and no more racism in this world. He goes, uh, how do you want that bridge out of stone or wood? <laughs> That's it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that. Yeah. Oh, God. I love you, Liberty, so much. Wow. Hello. She'll Reed. be back in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I can't wait till you move back I here. Know, oh, I'm dying. So, um, anyway, so tell everybody where you are on social media if you want them to follow you. Oh, I'm on Facebook. I don't do the gram and all that right now, but I we'll I get you, We got to get you on TikTok and the yeah, gram yeah, to do I your know, rapping. Yeah, I know. So I just haven't. I'm in Boston right now, but my Facebook is Liberty Hudson. And that's uh, H U D S Y N and Liberty, um, spelt like the statue, of course. Um, Hello. And so that's it. I'm on Facebook. So if you want to friend me and check me out, and uh, and and just there's millions of more stories that she has oh. that are just oh. Uh. Girl, the things that we pulled off. Oh, wait. Remember when Earthquake was doing a benefit and he was so drunk no one could find him? But he told me where he was. He was underneath the tables and see behind the curtain. <laughs> He said, yo, Miss Curtis, make sure you wake me up. I'm drunk. I'm going to take a nap. And then when he could find him, I got to go on. I knew where. Then I, I said, who are you looking for? Earthquake? Look, he's underneath those tapes. <laughs> Taking a nap. He was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and it was a big benefit. Like, for uh, some black charity thing. Of something. course it was. I was like, Earthquake was crazy. <laughs> Earthquake was passed out under oh, the tape. Girl. Honey, she's, uh, she's, she's, she's so out, she doesn't even register on the Richter <laughs> scale. <laughs> Twisted. Anyway. <laughs> Poor thing. We'll do this again. We're, yes. We'll have more. Um, yeah. Miss Curtis will be back. Miss Liberty will be back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to our fun, reminiscent of Caroline's on Broadway days. And uh, I will talk to you guys next week. Deuces. Happy Pride. Yes, bitch. <laughs>